We honor those who came before us. From the world of bonsai. Whose works we care for as living art. As well as the original caretakers of this land. On which we stand today. The traditional home of the Coast Salish people who are still here. Thank you from all of us. Welcome to Branch Out 2020. I'm Larry Snyder, your host, and I'm so grateful to be back here at the Pacific Bonsai Museum. Needless to say, everything in the world has changed, but the one thing that hasn't changed is this beautiful collection here at Pacific Bonsai Museum. Today's program is all about how we get to contribute to this beautiful Northwest treasure. Our fundraising goal is $60,000, and thanks to our generous donors, we're already halfway there. To contribute, click in the details. There is a link here on YouTube, and all you have to do is click on that link or visit PacificBonsaiMuseum.org. Now it is my pleasure to introduce my friend and the executive director, Kathy McCabe. Welcome, and thank you for joining us for Branch Out 2020. During these challenging times, bonsai offer perspective, solace, and hope. In bonsai, we're reminded that both art and nature are more meaningful, more essential right now. Art affects us more deeply, helping us to put our world into perspective Nature nourishes us, helping us breathe and find solace. The wonderful thing about bonsai is that it connects us to both art and nature. It's restorative for both our minds and our hearts. It brings us hope. Whether you are a nature lover, an arts enthusiast, a bonsai practitioner, or all three, Pacific Bonsai Museum is here for you. Together with you, our mission to connect people to nature through the living art of bonsai continues every day of the year. We are so glad you're part of our community. Thank you for being with us today as we branch out. On August 4th, 2020, after months of preparation during the shutdown because of the pandemic, Pacific Bonsai Museum launched its new groundbreaking exhibition, World War Bonsai, Remembrance and Resilience. As a practitioner of bonsai and student of history, I have made an attempt to understand the pivotal role that World War II played in establishing bonsai as a worldwide art form. Some efforts have been made to locate and preserve the stories of bonsai practitioners related to World War II but due to a shortage of bonsai historians, they are not widely known or accessed. Therefore, the stories of bonsai practitioners and their trees in relation to World War II or to war in general has never been told before in the setting of a formal museum exhibition. World War Bonsai, Remembrance and Resilience traces the cultural practice of bonsai in Japan and in the United States, examining how bonsai was practiced prior to and during the war years, amid incarceration, occupation, and at peace. With 32 bonsai, artifacts, documents, and photographs, the exhibition shares the little known stories of the people who ingeniously and courageously cared for bonsai, shared their art, and spurred a flourishing global practice despite overwhelming hardships. Reading the biographical stories of bonsai artists working in the World War II era, Paired with those artists' living legacies, we discover a powerful and inspiring untold history. We encounter bonsai as displays of patriotic loyalty and subversive acts of defiance. We find assertions of cultural identity and the sheltering comfort of community. We witness practitioners finding ways to cultivate bonsai amid loss, grief, humiliation, and despair. We see the art of bonsai as a bridge to greater cultural appreciation and reconciliation that inspire generations of bonsai artists all over the world. With this exhibition, we call on the viewer to consider what might have happened to the art of bonsai if World War II 
had never occurred. Thank you to these organizations and individuals for their support of and contributions to this exhibition. For Culture, the Oki Foundation, Aaron Shigaki, Anna Tamura, and Nancy Yukai. December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. When that news came on, my dad's face, I just saw his face just, just drop. Hiroshima was selected as the first to feel the weight of atomic power. There's nothing left after then we have to struggle to live there. You have to keep going. Men, women, and children from their homes, their shops, and their farms, all of them have to move. When I was six months old, we were sent to uh, Minidoka. My family really never talked about the experience at all. I think they were so ashamed but a lot of what the camps taught me, if nothing more than historically, was that the people, the Japanese people that were there um, had a great deal of integrity in what they were doing, always. So they were brought out to a desert with nothing there and they actually created farms, they cultivated the land, they grew crops, they, they provided irrigation and they made art. And I think one of the finest examples of this art is, is the bonsai. I'm currently standing at the very beginning of the World War Bonsai exhibit and as people come into the display they are going to be encountering a dead tree which is probably not what they were expecting to see upon uh, coming to the museum and this was very intentional to um, for, for one grab their attention and really allow them a moment to pause and to get into the right frame of mind as well as to understand that they're going to be encountering some subject matter that might be um, uncomfortable. Like everything we do at the museum, we want the, it to be about the bonsai trees. And so the idea of the, the exhibit's layout was to look at how to tell the story of Japanese America, their experience um, related to the events of the war from Pearl Harbor, um, through incarceration, through life in the camps, um, to the end of the war, Hiroshima, the Allied occupation, and sort of all of these very significant points in history. How did those impact bonsai as a practice, both in the U.S. and Japan? having it set out as sort of chronological, but also thematic, tying the, the trees together with those themes. We're now at the very heart of the exhibit. As far as we know, this Japanese black pine bonsai is the only bonsai that can trace its provenance to being cultivated in one of the incarceration camps. Juzaburo Furuzawa was a nursery man in the Bay Area of California, and upon the enaction of Executive Order 9066, had to sell his, his nursery business, um, and first went into incarceration at Tule Lake, and then um, down into the Topaz incarceration camp. Upon his arrival there, his family, hearing about it, sent him Japanese black pine seeds to plant while he was incarcerated. 
He sowed these black pine seeds in the only thing he could find at the time, a tin can. And Furuzawa took these little seedlings with him upon his release uh, back to the Bay Area. And eventually, uh, one of them grew into this tree. This tree really represents the theme of the exhibit, which is remembrance and resilience. And Japanese black pines, in general, uh, represent strength in Japanese culture and longevity and that resilience to withstand um, the storms of life. And I think Jerusaburo was hopefully looking towards the future as he planted this tree. My name is Erin Shigaki and I'm an artist and an activist. The Pacific Bonsai Museum invited me to put some of my wheat paste murals up in this space. They are historic images of Japanese Americans before and during the incarceration to pay homage to my ancestors who went through this ordeal. Both sides of my family were incarcerated. I feel it's really important to share the story because it has been undertaught and because it's important to realize that this community was really resilient and for the most part survived this experience. I'm really passionate about weaving together this story with kind of what's been happening in this country and continues to happen to black, brown, and indigenous people. The act of shaping these trees with extreme patience and care and sort of having the notion that you're making something that's not immediate, but that's going to be art over a long period of time, that resonates with me in sort of being patient um, and hopeful. And I just really feel strongly that we need to ask ourselves, you know, what else we can do especially based upon the fact that our communities lost so much during World War II. My father once said that you couldn't do what he does unless you love trees. And that's who he was. My father really started to do a lot of bonsai later in his life. And he had a shed in back of our old house with pots and bamboo fencing and he would work there whenever he had quiet time. That was what he did did it for the love of doing it. I've often thought of the, of the trident maple, and he said, you can start a tree and you may not see it completed, which to me says you don't own it. You are, you're the caretaker for the time being. And I, well, that's how it came. It came to his father from Japan, and from his father to him. It, it has a life of its own. When they were beginning to start the, the Bonsai Museum, there were a group of people from here who went all over the West Coast looking for trees. That's when he decided it would go there eventually. But it, it didn't go right when the Bonsai, Garden, Bonsai Museum was open. It went seven years later because he said he would like to see it change colors one more year. Well, in the Bay Area in California, you don't see things that change color that often. When it 
did come up here, uh, the curator then, David DeBoat, came. He flew down and my father rode back on the truck with the tree. On a flatbed truck, that was it. I think that's, that's amazing. It's like giving up your child for adoption or something. When I see photographs of it, I'm, I'm just stunned. I think, it's, I think it's so beautiful. It has so much presence. And of course, then there's the legacy that this was from my grandfather and who I never knew from my father. We came for the exhibit where they put color behind various trees and talked about form and shape and color and so forth. I was struck. I thought that was amazing. And it's not something I would have imagined, but I think it I think it's absolutely the kind of thing that needs to be done to keep this art alive and supported in a larger community. The, the Bonsai Museum is a beautiful site. It's lovely to go there. It's so quiet and it's spacious and it's surrounded by these huge tall trees, which I think is quite lovely. Um, yeah, I think it's unique. The arts are terribly important. They are, they keep your spirit alive. Thank you for sharing that remarkable piece of your family's history, Marilyn. I'd like to begin this fundraising ask with a challenge. Please consider matching or even increasing the gift that you gave last year. And we'd like to say welcome to all of our new supporters. We're grateful for gifts of every size today because every dollar counts towards our goal of $60,000. Once again, to contribute, simply find the link in this YouTube video in the description or visit PacificBonsaiMuseum.org. These vital funds ensure the preservation of this treasured collection for years to come. Like last year, we're giving you several levels to contribute. In an effort to raise $60,000 today, we're going to start at the $2,500 level. As an incentive for gifts at $2,500 and above, you will receive a beautiful kusumono. At the $1,000 level, I have some great news. The Pacific Bonsai Museum Board of Directors has created a matching fund, and they will match the first 17 gifts at $1,000. Also, all contributions of $1,000 made before August 23rd will receive a special upcoming World War Bonsai exhibit catalog. Thank you for your gifts at $1,000. The $500 level supports programs like the all-important docent program, a key function of sharing the unique and valued history of this collection. Thank you for your gifts at $500. At the $250 level, your gift will impact programs like the youth outreach and field trips, which inspire the next generation to know the art of bonsai. Thank you for your gifts at $250. For the first 50 that contribute at the $100 level, Pacific Bonsai Museum will provide a Japanese black pine seed packet that we hope you'll plant to remember our Japanese American friends in World War II. Thank you for your gifts at $100. Thank you. Pacific Bonsai Museum is grateful for all the contributions of all denominations. One last time, please find the link in the description of this YouTube video or use the donate link at pacificbonsaimuseum.org. Thank you for all your gifts. Now, let's hear from some other Pacific Bonsai Museum enthusiasts. To me, Pacific Bonsai Museum means we're blessed with the opportunity to make fine art accessible to the general public. To me, the Pacific Bonsai Museum represents a reflection of the beautiful result that can occur when humans engage with nature in a deeply intimate way. Within a setting of peaceful and quiet contemplation, the museum offers 
a place to look at nature and have art. What more could you ask for? Kim, my wife, and I, we were well familiar with the warehouse or bonsai museum. And when it changed and became a nonprofit, I was really hopeful that it would be something that would open up to a larger audience. And I think it has, and I do hope you could support this endeavor. The Pacific Bonsai Museum offers me the opportunity to work on world-class bonsai. The Pacific Bonsai Museum means much joy and happiness every time I come here and visit and work as a volunteer. I'd like to say thank you to all the members, everyone who, who keeps this museum uh, up and running. Um, it's such a magical place and it would be such a shame if it wasn't here. To me, Pacific Bonsai Museum means a sense of history, uh, a feeling of energy and also uh, peaceful serenity. To me, Pacific Bonsai Museum means being around these beautiful trees, being able to work on them, learning a lot of things that I can apply to my own trees, and just uh, generally the fantastic atmosphere around here. Thank you very much to the Pacific Bonsai Museum for allowing me to bring my work asking questions of your visitors and tying it together with the resilience that comes out in the bonsai displayed in your show. Thank you. Thank you, Pacific Bonsai Museum. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. I'm Will Hayes, um, the designer for the book, uh, The Gallery of Trees. Growing up, my dad always had a green thumb. He started doing bonsai probably around the mid 90s. And I was just always kind of fascinated with it. What struck me when I was young was uh, the fact that they looked like these magnificent trees on a miniature scale. Uh, as I got older, um, it, it became really more interesting to the fact of the, the history and the age and the stories behind these trees. Being a designer, I have a couple of things on a bucket list that I want to do. And one of the things on my list was a, a book on bonsai. I just started doing some research to see what uh, was around and this museum popped up on my search and I went through the site and I couldn't believe that this museum was here not being from Seattle. I just thought what a great starting point so I just did a cold email. Hey I'm Will Hayes. I'm working on a book uh, on a bonsai book. After a couple emails back and forth I met a uh, Catherine for coffee and then she said you know well we're actually looking to do a book uh, would you be interested in, in possibly doing a book with us and the more I learned about the museum and how unique it is we just all clicked and it was just the perfect fit we knew that they wanted to to show the trees. Um, and so then it was, it was how do we present that um, in a, a unique and modern way while kind of showcasing the history. Started gathering kind of mood board items, different designs, uh, color palettes. And so then we brought all those in and we kind of discussed um, what we felt like uh, really worked and what was exciting. And yeah, we just kind of got a good feel and, and uh, from all of those pieces um, and kind of came up with one little mood board palette that we all liked. In taking the uniqueness of this museum and everything they do and trying to get that into a print form, we kind of looked at the history of print in general and that's really where the screen print kind of um, image came from that starts each, each tree in the book. In the background of those prints is actually a macro shot of the bark um, from that tree. To get this printed with the number of pages in full color and hard, hardback, uh, it was substantial. So we looked for crowdfunding, we went through Kickstarter, which was a lot of 
a lot of work. It was kind of an all team effort and the support we got was, was amazing. It's something that uh, I'll keep forever and um, I'm super proud of and to be able to share it with my dad and other family members, it's amazing. From a cold email, um, looking for some resources and, and images to, uh, to the completion of a book of, of trees that are truly spectacular. Um, I'm at a loss of words, there's no other way it could have been this great. We're grateful you joined us today. I hope you enjoyed a look at the Pacific Bonsai Museum's World War Bonsai exhibit. We hope to see you soon here at the Pacific Bonsai Museum. And now, back to Kathy. We are here for you. Our bonsai collection, our special exhibits like World War Bonsai, our education programs, and innovative initiatives like the lab are here for you for our whole community and for future generations. I invite you to join me in keeping these programs going and the museum thriving by making your donation today. It's easy. Click on the link in the description of this video on YouTube or go to pacificbonsaimuseum.org. Like to send a special thank you to our founder, George H. Weyerhaeuser, to our board of directors, members, volunteers, and to all of you who support Pacific Bonsai Museum. Your gifts of time, talent, and treasure are deeply appreciated. Thank you.